Hello, my name is Lisa Shea, and this video is part of a series on Japanese and Chinese books and DVDs and audio tapes and all sorts of other kinds of things. So what we're going to talk about today is one of my favorites, Zen Flesh, Zen Bones. I know that the darkness is a little rough with this camera, but hopefully you can see it there. I just love the cover in general. I love the whole way that this is laid out, but I mean, I love the content even more. It has a nice cover and it has nice content. Uh, compiled by Paul Reps and Yogen Senzaki. So what this is, is this first came out in 1957 and it's a compilation of four different books, <laughs> which have all sorts of writings from the 12th century, the 13th century, and a number of other centuries. So it has all sorts of great information, which is translated into English so that uh, those of us who don't speak Chinese or Japanese or other such languages can understand what is being said. And it's got different sections to it. So you have to understand that going in. This isn't necessarily something that you read start to finish and it all is part of one whole. There's different sections and each section has a different kind of purpose to it. So the first section is a section that I read most of the time. And this is a collection of short little stories. So you have to see, you see that. So you can see that there's different stories. They are numbered. And what I will often do is keep this by my bed and maybe read one little story at night or one little story in the morning. They're very short. And then you can ponder that for a while and think about what the story is trying to tell you, what its meaning is. I won't read you any of these entire stories because while they are short, you probably still also don't want to sit here and have me read you an entire page worth of information in it. But I will give a summary of one, for example. So a person walks into a market and he hears a customer saying to the person, to the uh, salesperson, give me the best piece of meat that you have. And the butcher says, everything in my shop is the best. I do my best to make sure that every single piece that I put out is the very best that it can be for what it is. So you can choose whichever one you want and know that it's the best for that kind of type of meat. And the person who was walking through became enlightened on hearing this at this thought that there isn't necessarily one best thing. And this goes back to, you know, this is repeated in many other <laughs> poems and stories and movies. The idea that a cherry blossom tree can have a whole bunch of cherry blossoms on it. And it's not that any one particular of the cherry blossoms is perfect. Each of the cherry blossoms is perfect in its own particular way. And that's part of the beauty of the life that we have, that everything can be perfect, even an imperfect broken jug can be perfect in its own way for the way that it looks or the way that it acts. So I, you know, I'm sure that anyone who's read all these kinds of stories has example after example of it. And those are the kinds of stories that are in here. They're stories that are little moments in life about a situation and the kinds of things that it brings to mind and things for you to ponder about it. So I enjoy them. They are the types of stories that you, know, you could read it once and then really enjoy it. And then you, know, you get to the end of the book and then you start again the next year and then you read the same story and now you've got a different kind of insight into it because maybe you've learned something along the way or maybe just a phrase hits you differently depending on the situation that you're in. So I love reading the different stories that are in here. If we get a little further in, then we've got other sections in here. The 10 bulls. This is talking about the stages in life that one goes through with uh, beautiful illustrations in it. There are sections on centering. And then there is, I'll save this one for last, the gateless gate. And in the gateless gate, there are sections that were read to monks. And then you have commentary on what was read to the monks. And then you have a short poem that is a further commentary on what was read to the monks. And in a lot of cases, the comment on the little story agrees with the story. And in some cases, the commentary on the story disagrees with the story. So it, it helps you really think about these stories and not just say, oh, okay, that's a story. And I think I understand its meaning. When you read the commentary and you say, oh, well, maybe if I look at it in a different way, maybe I see something else about what the story is trying to say. So in all of these cases, from all of these different points of view, 
you are getting something to consider and ponder, something to think about. It's not just a, uh, let's say, a fairy tale that says, uh, don't talk to strangers, and then that's pretty much the end of it. These are meant to be things that you think about from all sorts of different angles. You think about how you apply them to your life. You get uh, thoughts maybe to talk to someone else about them and see how they interpret the poem or the story or whatever it is that you are reading. So very worth reading. Send flesh, send bones. I enjoy it immensely. And like I said, uh, it's something that I like to read and then reread and see what kind of insight I get out of it. So let me know if you have any questions about this book and let me know if there are other books you'd like me to take a look at.